Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chakras and Cuss Words podcast. My name is Catherine. I am the podcast host, and today we are talking about the planet Jupiter. And if you are new here to Chakras and Cuss Words, welcome, welcome, welcome. We talk about everything energetic and energy related, and we are currently on the astrology series. If you would like to listen to the astrology series in chronological order, I highly suggest you head on over to my Chakras and Cuss Words podcast YouTube channel so you could tap into the astrology series. Also, I have the Chakra series as well in chronological order, which is a series all about the chakra system. So let's dive into this energy of the planet Jupiter. And I just want to say, first of all, the planet Jupiter is one of the baddest planets. (laughs) I guess you could say bad meaning good, right? Um, But is definitely one of the planets that you always want to kind of take a look at when you're looking at somebody's chart, when you're looking at your own chart, seeing where your Jupiter lies, seeing where that energy within Jupiter really holds for the moment for that person, seeing what current transits are going on with Jupiter. It is definitely a planet that you want to pay attention to, right? Like most of the planets, but Jupiter really has that big, big reputation of being a dominant planet, especially when it comes to areas of expansion, abundance, and growth, and even areas of success. So there's a lot of things to get covered when we talk about Jupiter. So hold on to your seats because this is going to take a moment. But let's first start to talk about how big Jupiter is. Jupiter is the largest planet that we have. Uh, Definitely the largest. It's the biggest. It's the baddest. It's the big baddie, right? Um, Jupiter is also known as being a gassy planet. Hmm. (laughs) So it is a gas planet. It's not made of a lot of soil or rock or minerals. It's not like a big mineral planet like Mars or Earth is. There's not really like caves or mountains or anything like that. It has a large gas consumption. Also, what's interesting about Jupiter is Jupiter, since it is the biggest planet, that also means that it's one of the planets we can actually see with the naked eye. Um, It's one of the planets that really stands out. And a lot of times we see it as one of the brightest stars, right? We're like, oh, that star is so bright, but it might actually be the planet Jupiter. And uh, Jupiter is one of the brightest planets. It's definitely the third biggest object in the sky, um, in the night sky for us to see. It's right after the moon and um, Venus. So Venus is a little bit closer, which means that we can see Venus a little bit easier versus Jupiter. But Jupiter is so big that we're able to see this big baddie from the night sky. Jupiter is also known for having like this area of um, this huge, massive storm around it. And it's kind of seen as the great red spot. And it has been believed to existed since the 17th century. Jupiter, in all honesty, was named after the Roman god Jupiter. And we'll get into the story of the Roman God a little bit later, but Jupiter definitely has this energy of being like a God-like planet. And it's really being known as this area of worship for some people and also this area of manifesting when we think about Jupiter. Also, Jupiter is also seen to be related in some correlations to the area of Zeus. And Zeus was the Greek god. So when we look at the two gods, both of them really have this godlike state that is ruled over energies of success, but also energies of laws and social order. We also see that area of being like brave and being... um 
highly, I have a lot of influence over individuals and probably over their community and their collective as well. And Jupiter in astrology, when we talk about Jupiter in astrology, we really see that Jupiter has this area of morales and it also has this area of faith and it has this area of success and um, it has like this positive nature. Like a lot of times when we hear like astrological stories or we talk about Jupiter and we see Jupiter, we're like, yay, you know, it's not like that planet that like we look at and we see Pluto and we're like, oh, ooh, ooh, Pluto gives me the creeps or Saturn feels so constrictive or if you have a Saturn return, you might have some obstacles, you might have some challenges, you might have to be working through your responsibilities. But with Jupiter, we're like, ooh, it's your Jupiter return. Yay. <laughs> so it definitely has that positive energy. Also, Jupiter only rules one zodiac, which is quite interesting. You know, it's not like a two zodiac ruler like Mercury or Saturn, it is one zodiac, and that zodiac is the Sagittarius. And when I think of certain Sagittariuses who have been extremely successful, um, I think of like Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's more, but that's the one that kind of popped off right at the top of my head with Sag that Sagittarius woman that Sagittarius Zodiac, like she has this like huge collective. She's known to bring like revenues to not only herself, but also to the communities that she travels to. So she almost has this huge Jupiter presence about her that really stands out. They say that she's increased the football game watching um, for women. Now women are tuning in to see the Chiefs play, not necessarily because they care about football, but just because they want to see Taylor Swift. So it's it's very interesting of that area of expansion that Taylor Swift is really able to bring, that area of success, and she is a Sagittarius. Also, when I think about um, certain certain areas of the Sagittarius. The, the Sagittarius, like Jupiter, is kind of like the god of Jupiter, is kind of designed on that area of braveness, of making moves that maybe not everybody would make, right? And I think we see that with a lot of the Sagittariuses. It also kind of makes me think of Nicki Minaj, that energy of where too much expansion can kind of be seen as a bad thing as well and seen also as like a greedy thing uh, when I think of that Jupiter energy. It also is exhalated in Cancer. So Jupiter kind of feels right at home with the, the Cancer Zodiac when Jupiter is with um, Cancer signs. So that's kind of a nice representation, that area of being aligned with the emotions, also being aligned with the nurturing state that the cancer brings and bring a aligned in that feminine presence. Jupiter is kind of seen as a masculine energy. Most of the planets are, but Jupiter's also really seen as it in Sagittarius is considered a masculine energy zodiac. Another thing that, um, when we look at Jupiter, there's a lot of area of contradiction with Jupiter as well, with the planet Jupiter in the chart. So yes, there could be this big, big, big state of expansion, this big state of advancement, but then there can also be this energy of constriction. There could also be this energy of representation when it begins to feel very maybe selfish or when it begins to feel maybe a little bit greedy and a little bit too centered off of the ego state, right? Um, in comparisons of the ego versus the higher self, we should be leading with the energy of the higher self, of giving back, of showing. But Jupiter can kind of have this contradiction where if we see it in the chart, 
we're wondering where is the responsibility because Jupiter can also be seen as a irresponsibility, right? Like if you're able to have all this, all this success, all this money, all this time, all this freedom, what do you do with it? What happens with it, right? Where Where is the energy of morales? Also with Jupiter, um, it can be kind of seen as like the influencer, right? In some ways, because Jupiter is known for having a lot of followers. Um, when we think about the God state of these Kings, right? And when we think about that, right, it's like, we don't necessarily want to follow people blindly, kind of. We don't want to necessarily like just because an influencer that we like and has a millions of subscribers and we think, oh my gosh, this influencer is so great. That doesn't necessarily mean that we just follow them for everything they do, right? We still have to have that energy where we can think of ourselves for ourselves and understand that maybe too much isn't necessarily the best thing, right? So it's not it does come with that area of over overindulgence and it also comes with that energy of like having an optimistic approach all the time which can then turn into a negative sense in some areas um one of the things that i want to say is jupiter sh should bring most of us that little energy of self-confidence and also that energy of wisdom when we think about jupiter as a whole as the planet like looking at how we can use that area of expansion? How can we use that zodiac that Jupiter may be aligned in in our chart, that area, and kind of take it to create some abundance or create some areas of success or work towards certain goals when we look at it? Also, Jupiter represents the number three. And, you know, when you see that three, three, three on the microwave, that is considered like a lucky energy, an energy where we want to create. It's also kind of seen as the energy of rituals. Um, three, a lot of rituals are, or a lot of spell casting, as some might say, are kind of started in the number three, three steps, three rituals, three dates, or so on. The day that represents in Jupiter is Thursday, and also the color is purple. Jupiter, um, the parts of the body that Jupiter is believed to rule over or have influence over are the pituitary gland and the liver. Um, Jupiter, when we think about the metal, it's a representation of tin. And the stones that are included are sapphire, amethyst, and turquoise. And when we think about herbs, if we are using some herbs to tap into our Jupiter magic, to tap into our areas of gazing under Jupiter, we would use some jasmine, some nutmeg, and some sage. Also, the plants that are known for Jupiter would be the, plant, the oak and also poplar. So let's look at Jupiter when it's in the sky. So Jupiter, when it's in the sky, it actually takes um, two cycles, which is the geocentric path of Jupiter, which is over two cycles, and it takes about 24 years. For Jupiter to complete that cycle, that doesn't mean that it takes 24 years for Jupiter to be in one zodiac, right? So Jupiter, the zodiac wheel consists of 12. So you are likely to have a Jupiter return every 12 years. Thank goodness it's not like a Saturn return, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, a Saturn returns every like 27 years for the uh, planet to move through the orbit of the sun. But for the zodiac wheel and also... Um, for us, Jupiter is 12 years. Also, um, this fixed pattern of the stars that Jupiter brings kind of brings us that area of, resigna of, of re resonation with ourself, of being able to resonate 
with who we are in our areas of success. Every 12 years, I would say, is a good time to look at how you can create upcoming successes and also upcoming areas of success for the next 12 years, right? It kind of gives you like a good perspective when I think of it. Also, um, what's interesting about Jupiter, when we think about the area of Jupiter in the placement of the gods, is Jupiter is also known for having a lot of lovers. And that might be where Jupiter gets that energy of a lot of followers. So Jupiter was known for having a lot of lovers um, when we think of the god Jupiter. And with these love affairs, Jupiter was also able to bring like this strong energy of relationship towards wealth and towards kind of energy of completion, energy of success, energy of conquering. And we see that with certain aspects of the chart with Jupiter. Like a lot of times I hear when you have Jupiter in your career houses, and when we think about the career houses in the chart, we're thinking like the second house, that area of material gains, also that area of wealth, that area of um, indulgence, Or then we look at Jupiter in the 10th house, and that would be like uh, your career house, your reputation house, your energy of like your legacy. And if you have Jupiter in that space, a lot of people believe that you have a strong natural ability to succeed. So some of the famous people who have Jupiter in their second house, I believe, includes like Bill Gates. Oprah. Um, So a lot of heavy hitters. Um, There's also a few of the rap girlies. I think Taylor Swift might also have her Jupiter in her second house, but I'm not 100% sure. But I've also seen some of the rap girlies having Jupiter in their second house as well. So um, there's definitely this area of success There is that area of drive that can keep you going um, where your focus might be off of more of success in the career state versus somebody who, let's say, had Jupiter in their fourth house or maybe had Jupiter in their fifth house. Somebody who had Jupiter in their fifth house might really feel that energy where they want to bring... um, it towards like communication or socialization and then um, areas of like social justice, right? If you saw like Jupiter in the seventh house or maybe areas of partnerships with Jupiter in the seventh house. But then also like, let's say you had Jupiter in your fifth house, which is known as like your home, your home life, right? I would think that you would concentrate on the success of your home life. Like you would be somebody who maybe didn't want to work all the time, but um, actually wanted to spend more time at home because you wanted to make sure like the kids were good, the family's good, you know, everything is running in like a smooth, energetic alignment and giving that energy more to the home and the personal space of those relationships. And what's interesting is when we talk about success and we talk about that energy of success, we have to look at how does it really play out in the life, right? I know people who have made a lot, a lot, a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Um, And you would think that year would be like, oh, the best year of their life, right? But for whatever reason, it just wasn't. It was like actually one of the worst years of their life. It was like a horrible year for them. Even though financially, they made tons of money, tons of money. But something was lacking in the home life or something happened with um, their family or It was maybe they were very depressed or they were extremely burnt out. But in all honesty, it just was not a good year. And we see that with people who have a lot of money, that sometimes it looks great on the outside, but then on the inside, 
it's really a mess or on the inside, there's a lot of secrets and shadows that are kind of playing out in this life. So like I said, Jupiter has its areas of strengths, but it also has its areas of where we need to have this balance. And I think that's kind of the representation of the social aspect of it that Jupiter plays with some of these deities, with some of these gods. Um, and Jupiter is known for having, when we think about Jupiter and his love affairs, Jupiter is believed to have fathered the area of love, the area of wealth, and the area of springtime. Also, it is known to be um, the energy that has ruled over the sun and the moon when we think about it. And I don't know if that's, because of the mytholo mythology that Jupiter was the biggest, so he must have been the father of the sun and the moon, but really having this energy that of the god, of the god, right, um, that Jupiter had. Also, what's interesting with Jupiter is that Jupiter is also considered in some cultures, because we have to remember that there are different types of cultures that not just the Roman um, and the Greek mythology, but there's also like Vedic astrology. And with Vedic astrology, Jupiter is more seen as um, the area that is associated with gods, but also the area of war and thunder and storms, which is very interesting that I'm recording this podcast because we're currently having the Pineapple Express storm here in California. But um, it is definitely considered that energy of um, association with more of like weather, also that area of expansion as well, but really associated with the area of storms. It is also seen as one of uh, the warrior signs. And when we think about like warriors, we also think about that energy of Zeus, like Zeus was holding a lightning bolt, I believe. And also that energy of the Sagittarius, that bow and arrow. So it does have some similarities in some of the cultures, but each culture is very different. And we need to take a mind of that. Also in Hindu population and communities, Jupiter is also kind of seen as the teacher, the wise one, and the guru. Um, so it also has a lot of areas of bringing lessons to individuals, not just abundance. So for the most part, Jupiter is considered that area of creating support and not over indulging where the opportunities start to bring more problems or more barriers. So Jupiter is definitely has that area of kindness, but it does also have that area where we don't want to tap into all of the irresponsibilities of Jupiter that is held up in Jupiter's reputation, right? So let's look at some of the areas that we would use Jupiter. So like if Jupiter, let's say, was in our, let's just go ahead and say that Jupiter was in our first house and our first house represents, we'll just say Aries. So we know that with Jupiter, we're going to look at that energy of self-confidence, also assertiveness, and seeing how we could bring more expansion. Also the area of the physical, um, with the physical body. So maybe that means like showing who we are, right? Maybe that's really showing who we are as a person, who we are in areas of, um, of people seeing our home life, if that's like your influence or showing that assertiveness in your career or in your job. Also with Jupiter, if Jupiter was in its home state, let's say Jupiter was in the ninth house and it was 
with Sagittarius, we would definitely see that that person would have a long area of um, probably wanting to be centered around using their throat chakra, um, areas of like publishing, writing, speaking their core message, also higher learning, gaining wisdom, and looking into the philosophy. They probably would have like this big open mind and is like optimistic. I would see somebody with Jupiter in the ninth house as almost being like a teacher or somebody who is really centered around that area of optimism, adventure, probably definitely like a world traveler, maybe somebody like who's a no man who doesn't necessarily live in their house, but they live traveling or they live finding these new journeys uh, is somebody that I would think I would see a Jupiter in the ninth house, right? Could you imagine being a Sagittarius? Jupiter was in your ninth house and you were all about that energy. That would seem like a very interesting individual. Um, also, Jupiter is known of the king of the planets. So it comes with a lot of significance when we look at the king of planets. Like, I often think of what this one um, blog, I guess she's not, she, with this one celebrity um, commentary, she always says, like, when you are an influencer, it comes with a lot of responsibility. And Jupiter has that influence, just like the king of planets. So when you have a lot of influence, it extends over the presence of the sky. It extends over the presence of shaping other people's energies as well. Like if people are listening to you and following you and bringing that energy where they seek to you for wisdom, then you have a lot of responsibility to make sure that that energy is truthful, it is authentic, and it is aligned. So taking in that space of shaping the energies around you as well as the king, right, or the queen, it has a lot of association. And since Jupiter is associated with expansion and growth and abundance, and of course, wisdom, we have to really do our research when we are influencing others. And um, I would say for the most part that when we are looking at opportunities, there can be positives and there can also be negatives. And it makes me think about uh the time that I manifested my dream job <laughs> that I'm currently in right now. And is it perfect all the time? No. Is it where I want to be? Yes. Would I be wanting to do something else? No, not necessarily. But it shows that there is a positive and there is also a negative as well. And it also shows that energy of the individual, right? That energy of the individual. Also, it is a generous state when we think about it. For example, like if we are looking back at that energy of Jupiter and Aries, it has that generous, especially with um the Aries, the Aries might feel too much spontaneous energy if let's say Jupiter is with Aries. So it may bring like this direct boldness where then the Jupiter might have to kind of level down. That individual might have to do some grounding. Um, that individual might have to work on areas of just creating, 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 or wanting expansion, expansion, expansion at multiple times in a very fast pace, probably. Where if it was like, let's say, a Jupiter in Taurus, it would maybe have more of a focus of being a little bit more stable. It might actually take time to sensualize the pleasures. It might also take time to really indulge in the pleasures where it wouldn't be so like on the area of reception of gimme, 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 or let me do this. Let me take this. Let me move this. Let me, you know, create this. Let me accomplish this. But maybe Taurus, it would have a more of a material focus. And also it would be maybe a little bit slower, but then with the Taurus, it might also gain too much of the indulgence, right? Too much of the success where that greed starts to um, tap in 
more because it is centered around the indulgence of always having, you know, the fear of losing money, um, especially if you didn't have money. And then now all of a sudden you have money and you begin to lose money. Ooh, that's scary right? Um, would probably be somebody's big, big fears, right? Even though they probably did quite well when they didn't have money, but they just had like a different lifestyle. Also, when I think about alignments in the birth chart, we want Jupiter to be in some ways of an aspect that feels centered around trines and sectiles, right? Because when we have too many oppositions, we can look at the oppositions or the squares and see where the challenges might be in our areas of um, creation or our areas of expansion. And we kind of see why these oppositions could be coming up or how come we can't move past them and finding ways to actually move past them. So there is definitely like this harmonious connection with people in their charts where they have a lot of Jupiter aspects, such as trines and sextiles. And we could see that there tends to be an a area where there could be success, but then also we don't want there to have that huge that huge energy where it's almost like the trine or the square is bringing that opposition. That opposition will tend to lead toward overindulgence or the person working through the ego state or even feeling very self-righteous. So that is something that we definitely look at when we look at certain charts. Also, what's interesting is like if you are going through your Jupiter return, Jupiter is currently with Taurus. Um, and then Jupiter will be transitioning over to Gemini in the springtime. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what that energy feels like. That is kind of considered like a good time for the Geminis and also, you know, for the Taurus. Um, it was considered a good year for them. Also, what we would look at too is also how this Gemini and Jupiter is in opposition with, let's say, the Sagittarius, where for the Sagittarius, this might be an energy where they have to work with their Jupiter energy, even if it feels a little bit outward and it feels a little bit more difficult. What I want to say is for the um, Gemini, this is a time because Jupiter, a full Jupiter return completes the orbits around the sun approximately every 12 years. So when it returns back to your zodiac, this is considered a time for you to have opportunities. It's also considered a time for you to have growth and expansion and personal development. So everybody check your chart, see if you are a Jupiter in Taurus, use this time before the spring or if you are a Jupiter in Gemini for the next year. So check your chart, right? Um, also, I think with Jupiter, we're going to see more Jupiter going into Gemini. We're going to see more people like speaking up, people more really um, using that area of communication. Um, also, we're going to see a lot of people using maybe like blog posts are really going to come back. Um, you know, people are really going to get into the area of writing their environment, also their areas of thoughts and processes. Um, so it's definitely a good time for the Gemini. So let's talk about Jupiter retrograde. So for the most part, all the planets go into retrograde. I feel like one of the ones that we always hear about, of course, is Mercury, right? Because we always hear Mercury retrograde. Oh my gosh, you know, and oh, that area of frenzy just kind of hits. And people just love to blame stuff on Mercury retrograde. So Jupiter retrograde appears to move at like a backwards motion, at a slower motion when it's in orbit from our perspective of the Earth. And it is known as the retrograde, right? Um, during these times, the expansion energy of Jupiter is 
turns inwards, prompting us to look at our areas of reflection. And also it should ask us to look at our areas of belief and values and aspirations. So it is a kind of slower pace where we could bring that reflection in. And it's also considered a time to do like a reassessment, right? To really see what is going on in our space, what is going on with our areas. So for instance, let's say I was in a job that I still was not really feeling aligned with, or I was doing something that I didn't feel aligned with, or I felt like it was maybe hindering my areas of success. It was hindering my areas of um, value, maybe in my career house if Jupiter was in my career house. So then I would look and see how could I reflect on this? How can I reflect on this time that I felt kind of at a standstill? I would use this time to kind of reflect on it and to embrace new ideas, to embrace new energies around me. Also, um, the Jupiter in houses, when we think about the Jupiter in houses of the birth chart, it most likely experiences that energy of growth when it's traveling through each of our birth charts, right? So the financial prosperity, of course, we see it a lot with Jupiter in those career houses, the areas of the first, I mean, of the second and the 10th. And also what I want to say is it shouldn't always be based on material items. So we have to look at that energy of the self-worth, especially with Jupiter, if it is in your house of like, let's say um, Virgo, let's say Jupiter's in your house of Virgo, you would want to look at your area of self-worth when it comes to like health, when it came to exercise, when it came to like helping others and creating rituals and creating daily habits and consistency. So Jupiter, just because it might not be in a career house or a quote unquote prosperity house or a success house, doesn't mean that Jupiter isn't successful in the other houses, right? So you definitely look at that energy of where your Jupiter is. And take time to reflect on it. Take time to look at what that house means to you. And as we navigate through our birth charts and as we navigate through the cosmos, we are reminded that there is boundless opportunity and potential of growth for each each one of us, right? Each one of us has this area of expansion. Each one of us has this Jupiter energy, this energy of God, this energy of finding our higher self, finding and aligning with the metaphysical and the physical around us. And we have this possibility of bringing personal and spiritual fulfillment. And I think that in all honesty is kind of what Jupiter really, really stands out for, right? That we shouldn't just look at it for areas of luck and opportunity, but we should also look at it for the areas of the personal development and the personal wisdom and the personal growth. Um, And that could be on a personal level for our internal space. It's really a blessing. It's not necessarily seen as something that we should just worry about success all the time. But a lot of times that's what we hear with Jupiter. And that's just because of the philosophy that Jupiter was um, ruled with, right? With that energy of success of that godlike state. Also with Jupiter, there is that area of pursuit. That is that area of um, exploration, travel, and higher wisdom. So for instance, like if you are in your Jupiter return, or maybe you've been thinking about going back to school, and let's say it's just been hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, and it, it's just kind of like... Um, It won't be quiet, right? That Jupiter energy of telling you to expand just won't be quiet. So it might be a time for you to really reflect on that and decide, yes, I'm going to do it. Or no, maybe not this year, but maybe next year, right? But take that time to definitely um, think about it and put that personal gain 
in focus, put it definitely in that area of movement. And I really think that when we look at that Jupiter energy, yes, there is the luck. There is that energy of um, expansion, of abundance, of manifesting, of feeling the generosity of what Jupiter can bring. But then also we have to look at our personal energy of kindness, of goodwill, of tendency to not overextend ourselves or not over exaggerate some of our traits or some of our place and just move at a function that feels aligned with us and feels aligned in the center of the purpose. So I wanted to thank everybody for listening to this podcast of Chakras and Cuss Words on everything about Jupiter Also, please head on over to Chakras and Cuss Words YouTube channel and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers. I'm at 800. And I also want to say, if you can leave me a review or rating on the podcast reviews, I would highly, highly, highly be appreciative of that. Um, It helps me move up the podcast ladder. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.